It's Wednesday, the 9th of August. And we're starting our day slightly differently by getting the subway to Glasgow Central. Welcome to All The Stations. Charing Cross. Uh, we knew that. We knew that. We are now approaching Cardross. Please mind the gap when alighting from this train. Oh, this is lovely. Another magnificent roof. We're at Balloch uh, by Loch Lomond and we've come to see the Balloch steam powered slipway uh, and the winch house behind us is unfortunately closed. Uh, a wee bit of history <laughs> is that this slipway and winch uh, was constructed in the early 20th century uh, and it's thought to be, the in Europe, the only surviving, still operating steam winch. is the made of the lock and it's free to have a look round. Even when we're nowhere near the sea, seagulls. We're at Dunbar Central. This, kind of, this reminds me of, um, I'm doing that thing now where I'm like, what, what this station reminds me of. This reminds me of... Shortlands. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, uh, that's what... I did not set that up. I was going to say like a southeastern style station, because um, we live on the line down to Orpington uh, in the area, Bromley area. Uh, it's a bit like Shortlands. I was also going to say Fern Hill. Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turnhill. Yeah. It's just very double island, ramps down to the Iron subway, way. ironwork along the platforms. It's like a southeastern station. We're having to change at Dunbar from Central because, uh, with this abandoned platform by the way, because on the way up to Helensburg and Balak, we skip the station. So we're just changing here to get to Stopper on the way down. We're not skipping stations, people. We're doing all of them. All of them. Bank. Uh, so somewhere in the vicinity of the railway station is a crane, which doesn't sound very interesting. But according to Robert on Facebook, um, this crane um, has a lot of history connected to the town. It's known lo locally as the Titan, and it was responsible for the demolition of the John Brown and Company shipyard, um, really, really famous shipyard, which built the QE2 and the Royal Yacht Britannia. Um, and the crane is actually uh, now, I just want to make sure I get this right, listed, so it, it can't be removed. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? It's actually 
actually A-listed. That's I got, incredible. I got you about three seconds of it through a dirty window. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. He's excited about that too. Should we go get him to give us a wave? <laughs> they want to be on camera. Come on, we're documenting the experience of travelling on railways. I waved at them. They didn't want to know. They they seemed so friendly. <laughs> Sorry, can I, what was that again? I says I can assure you, but not all like that. <laughs> It's alright, we like Scotland. It's alright, we, we know. What, what I was impressed by is so desperate were they to have a last drag on the cigarette that as the door shut, she, she stuck her foot in the door so that it, it, it held the door for three inches. She took a last drag and then flicked her cigarette through the gap in the door and then the doors had to reopen and close. I mean, that's a really, I mean, that takes skill. That's not the first time that lady's done that, is it? <laughs> now, now give us the historical significance of well, Singer. It seems a little bit anticlimactic now. <laughs> Uh, Singer Station named after the factory which made Singer sewing machines, which was nearby. So another example of where a station has been named after a local business. We went through IBM just yesterday. And um, Singer, it's in, the factory is no longer there, the Singer sewing machine factory, but there is a business park, the Clyde Bank business park. Hang on, is, is that our train? Maybe. Should we go and get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to Anna's land. Hey, it's a 318. He's going to Anna's land. Yes, he is. Throughout the whole of this trip, I was thinking about this lying in bed last night as I was trying to fall asleep. Everyone's obviously got very excited, like, oh, when you come to my station, you must see this. When you go through there, you must do that. I would say, but, and, we've got, and I've had a lot of emails. I've got more ones about Scotland and places to see, to see in Scotland than anywhere else. Do you think people are thinking, oh, those silly English people, they don't know about Scottish history. Well, they would be Let's... correct. <laughs> yeah, we, do, we do. We do now. I think um, Department of Education, <laughs> take note, that it, schools in England shouldn't just look at English history. And I know that there's elements of other history that you, you know and bring in, but when you're looking at British history, why does it only really focus on England? It should very much include Welsh history and Scottish history as well to give a, we're supposed to be a united country we should give a broad history of that country where are we Mulgai no say it properly M Mil Gavi no it's Mulgai it's the we start just, of the West Highland Way. We just spoke to the lovely man, David. In, in the, hey, David, in the booking office. Yeah, he said it is. What is the start of the walk? I think he said the West Highland Way, so you can walk up to Fort William. So, so get the train. People so get the train. People to get Fort the train to here, and they walk to Fort, Fort William. William. Get the train back. Which yeah. is like how many miles? Oh, a lot. He said it takes 13 days, roughly, to walk it. Do you want to walk, and I'll get the train, and I'll see you there next week. Sure. Yeah. All right, no guy. Sandwich time. Sandwich time. So this is the start of the West Highland Way. It feels like it should be more scenic at the beginning, but we've sort of come round to the back of the high street. There is a little, little stream. Out of Mill Guy. I just wanted to say it's got an amazing water feature. That's <laughs> in tap. That, that looks like original and it works. Yeah. 
Lowbrook. So we're at Croy. We did Lowbrook, but up the line is Falkirk High and Falkirk Grahamstone. Uh, yes. And that's where we had the property of the day. And we were going to go and do Falkirk Grahamstone today, but because we missed that connection at Anna's Land, it's got rail. It's a bit sad about that. Um, it's not their fault. Well, weirdly, we're going to a place next where we can discuss that exact issue with them because that's the end of our day. Hooray, got to cry and we're finished. But it's not, not the end of the video. <laughs> uh, so in a secret location somewhere in Glasgow that we cannot reveal upon pain of death if you signed the official secret Scott Rail Act. With blood. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see uh, Scott Rail's control centre for a little look around. Do, do, you, do, you want, do you want a click? Do you want a hand lens? Or do you just want to like do a fade to black? Can we do, can we apparate? No, because I haven't got, a tripod wobbly, just, I'm going to click. Ready? I want to say something simple, like here we are in the X room, but this is so complicated that I'm going to get the lovely Mark. Hello, Mark. Good evening. Hi there. Who, you are the head of inter integrated control. I am indeed. And where are we? Explain where we are. Uh, you're currently in the west of Scotland Signal Centre within the Scotrail Alliance integrated control room. You can see why I couldn't remember that. And in fact, we're in the gold command room as well in the building looking at, what is this screen? This is the, this is the CCF. Indeed, this is CCF. This is our control centre of the future. Here's up in the top left corner here, we have got Glasgow. Central, you can see all of our platforms yep. there. Uh, 1 to 15 high level, and then we've got 16 and 17, which are our low level and platforms. It's, and it's coming through down, right down through to Holy Town and Larkhall down here. So this is sort of south central Glasgow as well, right? Absolutely. So we've got our low level services from Glasgow Central, which yep. are bringing us through to Larkhall. We've also got our services that travel through to Edinburgh Waverley, and then also we take our trains out towards Paisley Gilmore Street in Ayrshire as well. So you've got a full suite of departures there from Glasgow Central in front of yeah. Now I'd like how everything is green, or oh, there's one yellow, but that's okay, so there's no red. I, I would, would I be right in saying, let me work this out, so green is probably on time, yellow is a little bit out of time, and probably it goes orange or red if it's, if it's delayed, is that correct? That's exactly right. right. So <laughs> green is on time, so I'm absolutely delighted that we'll have so many on time trains this evening. So am I. <laughs> we're in a really good railway out of Glasgow Central. Yellow trains, you did spot one there with two Lima service, that's going down to Larkhall. So that particular service is running between one and five minutes late. So it's turned yellow because it's just outside of on time. Now you mentioned that you've got some clever software that do this, but you've also got a highly trained run of men and women out there that know the network like the back of their hand, right? Absolutely, so it's great having all of our tools, all of our software, but ultimately it's our people, our people who are here every single day who know that network inside out and we draw on their expertise to make sure the right decisions are made. And Vicky, on camera right now, should we swap roles and you can go and meet some of the people that uh, help run the network, yes? Yes, please. Let's do it. <laughs> so we're speaking to Craig. Hello there, Craig. Hello there. Thank you for letting us momentarily uh, pause your work. So first of all, just tell us, what is it that you do here? Yeah. As the route control manager for Network Rail, my job is to oversee uh, the, in the infrastructure in Scotland. That anything from bridges, tunnels, track, overhead wires, signal points, that's my remit. If we do have a disruptive event, it's to manage the incident effectively and obtain good service recovery. So it's getting the infrastructure fixed and then getting the train service restored with all the operators in Scotland. I know it might be difficult to, to say, but roughly, like, how many different parts of the country might you be focusing on in, in a day? That is the challenge of the role because you could have several disruptive incidents going on at the one time. As we speak today, the east side of the country is particularly busy, but the west side is ticking over a bit nicely. The trick of the job is to A, delegate to the people who are meant to be doing it. So my job is to make sure that other people are doing their job, but secondly, to take an overview and see that the incidents are being effectively managed. Great, we're going to let you get back. Thank you so much for talking to us. You're very welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks, Scott Rowe. That was incredible. Thanks, Angus. Angus is over there taking a picture of us right now. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, right, more trains tomorrow again, Glasgow. It's still not done. When we go out tomorrow, yeah. I'm going to be thinking about the people all working these guys hard working really hard in here. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Can you tell it's week 14 and not week 1? <laughs>